Hello everyone, I'd like to give a brief demonstration on uh, something I've been working on that integrates with Blender's Camera Tracker and that's the ability to export um, Blender's Camera Tracker data to the bundle of file format such that you can run normal photogrammetry tools on the data out of the tracker. So I've set up this test scene with some manually placed tracks and I found that it actually works better if you have fewer um, manually tracked points than using something like AutoTrack but your mileage may vary. So I've done this done this track, I've got an error of 0.22. I've set up my tracking scene. It looks like this. And it's just some test footage of a drone flying over some fields. So the initial track looks pretty good and that ground plane is, is good enough for now. Um, if we install the add-on, we can now export this to the bundle of file format. So we'll go File, Export, Bundler, we'll choose a target directory. Everything in this directory will be overwritten, so it's best to have a blank directory. Down in the options here we have the movie clip that it's going to export. It uses this from the scenes active clip, and it's going to export the data for the, the scenes active camera, which should have the tracking data associated with it. In addition to that, there's a frame step option. Um, because photogrammetry tools shouldn't really work on every single frame of a video, I've just made a default such that it uses uh, three frames per second. If you have fast moving motion, you'll want a smaller frame step. If you have a very slow camera move, you'll want uh, a larger frame step. If you're on Windows, um, the Convert to PMVS and Execute PMVS should run out of the box for you. If you're on Linux, you have to do a couple of things which is documented on the GitHub page. So I'm going to turn on Convert to PMVS and Execute PMVS. So if you turn these two on, I recommend using the um, System Console and viewing that. So when we click Export, Blender's going to lock up and we'll cut over to the console to see what it's doing. We can see the, the bundle of tools running and now it's executing through PMVS. For those that don't know, these are tools where an application called Bundler runs first, which is usually directly on some images and it generates a sparse reconstruction, which is essentially what Blender's camera tracker is doing. After which you can run a tool called PMVS which uses that data to generate a dense reconstruction and you get a dense point cloud from the result. Now that it's completed, we'll take a look at what it uh, generated in the file system. So in our bundler folder, we have the individual frames that are rendered out from the original footage, the bundle.out file, which contains the cameras and point information and the list of images. Since we converted to PMVS, we have a PMVS folder which contains the radial distorted, undistorted um, data and images. And in the models folder, we have an output of a dense reconstruction of that sparse point cloud. From here, I'm going to use MeshLab to process that point cloud and bring it back into Blender. So if we go over to MeshLab, we can open project and that'll give us our um, basic sparse reconstruction and images. So if I look through the lens of this camera, I can see that here's the original image, here's the sparse reconstruction. So these are essentially the points that we've tracked in, well these are the points that we've tracked in Blender's camera tracker. And now we will import the dense reconstruction And if we have a look at that, we can see that we have a very large number of points that's been um, constructed from our initial tracking data. And that represents these fields, road, power pole, and a couple of the trees. So now we're going to generate a mesh. And for those who haven't seen photogrammetry pipelines, um, we'll use the Poisson surface reconstruction and then um, create textures from these rasters. 
So we'll just clean up the, the point cloud a little bit because we don't want the clouds in here. And that will probably be fine for now. I'll go to filters, remeshing, screen, Poisson surface reconstruction. And if you haven't seen a surface that's reconstructed in this way, it'll try and generate a watertight surface. So it will flow around the gaps in the original point cloud. So it generally ends up with a bit of noise or a bit of unwanted data around the edges. So what we'll do is we'll delete these parts of the mesh because it's not actually part of our reconstruction. It's just part of what that filter has done. So from here we'll go filter, uh, filters, texture, parameterization as a flat plane, uh, followed by filters, texture, project active rasters, color to current mesh. Okay, once the texture has been applied, uh, it's a little dark, but it'll be fine in Blender. We can see that we actually have color information, or well, that texture information on the mesh. So now we'll export out. I generally use Wavefront OBJ. Once that's exported, we'll go back to Blender and we'll import that object. And what we want to do here is say that it's Z up and Y forward. And when we import the object file, it will end up being in exactly the right location based on our original track. And you can see that moving against the original source footage. If we say over the top, there's the difference between the source footage and our mesh. Now what we want to do is set this mesh to shadow catcher for cycles and ensure it's on the background layer for our setup track shot. Now we can do something like add an object in make sure this is on the foreground layer And for that object, we'll set up a glossy material such that it reflects the background. And we can try rendering it. Okay, that's more like it. So now we've got a uh, mesh in our scene based on our very sparse track in Blender's Camera Tracker that we can now apply um, reflective objects in the scene and get actual accurate 3D reflections from the objects that inhabit that scene. For some of the mesh uh, it's a little bit noisy because um, the surface reconstruction makes it a bit lumpy. So if you have something occluding like this power pole it might end up looking a bit odd because the area that it includes is larger than the actual object in the original footage. And from that you would probably need to build your geometry specifically for that case because it cuts it out too much. But at the same time we can use our reconstruction to place an object directly on that position. Well, that's probably good enough for demonstration purposes. Make sure that's on the background layer. And in our background object, we'll just delete the mesh that represents that blob. Now if we re-render, we have a cutout where that object is. And there you have it.
a fully reconstructed 3D mesh in back in Blender from the camera tracker that we can reflect with our reflective objects accurately. Thanks for watching.